Noah's Ark was 2005's dating goals. Noah and Wade were the love story that every black gay boy dreamed of. It's me. I'm the black gay boy. We're taking 20 years of rewatching Noah's Ark and boiling this fictional love story down to three simple questions you can ask yourself to make your real relationship work. What up, though? I am Jay the Gentleman. That's at J-A-I the Gentleman on IG and Facebook. It's Wednesday, so this is a new episode of Dear Black Gay Men Podcast. It's our short bullshit free step out of our comfort zone to talk about all the emotional ups and downs along the journey to happiness hopefully this is our midweek reminder of how dope it is to be black gay men who love black gay men i am jay the gentleman this is dear black gay men podcast now let's get into the episode what noah and wade show us is that the key to making it past the 90 day hump is building a relationship routine if we're honest every part of our life revolves around some kind of routine if you decide to grow your hair you put in time effort and money into finding the right products to work into a wash day routine if you're trying to unbig your back you might find a trainer to give you a workout routine if you go back to school it's a study routine if you raise kids it's a bedtime routine our life is built around the routines we create for it except in our relationships for some reason we build routines around our goals but obstacles around our relationships we get so stuck in the idea that potential bay has to prove something to us that the idea of creating a meaningful routine around him is foreign noah is an aspiring writer and wade just sold his first script they link up regularly to talk mutual interest screenwriting wade invites himself to a gay club with noah and the show follows their love story from there they built a routine around each other that allows them to thrive first as a couple of friends then as an actual couple that was their 2005 love story on tv but since we're all high functioning ambitious men that are booked and busy there are three simple questions to help us develop 2023 routines that honor our dating goals these questions will help us build a life that creates the future we want for us and our man. You can ask them at any point during the dating phase and they'll hopefully get you from the DMs all the way over the 90 day hump. Then at the end of the episode, there's one bigger lesson that will help ensure your energy invested pays off with Potential Bay. But first, Psyched Perspective said, I needed to hear this. I'm begging someone I've been in an extended talking stage for 14 months to plan dates for a relationship and a title and yet he still can't and doesn't. This week, it just really kicked into my head. I deserve better. And Rakondius Lynch said, wow, this is good shit. And to that, I say thank you. There are three basic questions we have to ask ourselves as we develop our routine around a current or potential bay. What do I like to do alone? What do I want to do together? And what might I need to sacrifice to make these possible? When we're courting a man, we have to know for ourselves what we genuinely enjoy doing alone. What are our non-negotiables when it comes to our shared experience together? I work out five days a week because these gains are gaining. That two hours in the gym is next to therapy on my priority list. I'm not willing to compromise that time alone for a relationship. When we assess what we do alone, we get to see clearly if our non-negotiables are appropriate. If you got a list of 20 non-negotiables, things that you don't want to compromise on, whether it's your space or your time or your resources, then you probably shouldn't be dating. By asking, what do I like to do alone? You can start painting a clear picture of who you are before the relationship and who you could be in the relationship. Asking yourself, what do I wanna do together? Starts to paint the picture of what kind of relationship you want for yourself and potential bay. What does it look like? How do we spend our time together? And what job does our relationship fulfill? In the short term, you can think of ways that you two can connect, like cuddling and actually Netflix and chilling. How'd that get in there? Or maybe you're a foodie and you wanna find someone to experience new restaurants with you because your love language is quality time. Maybe you're a content creator and you want someone comfortable enough to join you on camera so for your YouTube channel, asking for myself. Or sexually, maybe you have certain kinks and fetishes that you want someone to engage engage with. This question, what do I want to do together, helps you use your short-term goals to filter out men that will absolutely not work. Then in the long term, as you venture through the ups and downs along the journey to happiness together, you can understand what job your relationship will serve in your lives. Perhaps your relationship will raise a family. So clearly a family-oriented man is necessary. Or maybe your relationship will build a business, so you need a man with ambition. Or maybe your relationship will buy a home. 
Edit. Asking yourself, what do I want to do together helps you understand what you're actually looking for in a partner. Using this question helps you focus your energy on connections with the greatest potential to be fulfilling. What do I need to sacrifice helps you keep your desires in check. So many of us believe that dating just happens. We don't look, but we want a man. We don't say we want a man, but we want a man. We live our best single life ever, but we want a man. Dating, if you do it right, has the potential to positively impact your life. But that gets hard for us to understand because we can't concretely see the fruits of our labor. If we get that degree, we can see the earning potential. If we save, we can buy that house. If we clean up our credit, the score goes up. If we work out, our body gets better. Men are attracted to tangible outcomes. But asking yourself what you're willing to sacrifice to pursue these intangible outcomes forces you to assess how bad do you want it? Do you want an actual relationship or do you just want to casually date because you're bored? Do you want to find love or do you just want to take a cute pictures for the gram? Do you want to build a future with someone or do you just want to have somebody to go out with on the regular? Knowing the sacrifice you're willing to make for your emotional future adds weight to your journey. It adds gravitas, it makes it matter. And once the journey to happiness really matters, once you've given up something for it, once you've put something on the line for it, once you've sacrificed for it, you won't waste time on bullshit. When you know the lengths you're willing to go for your future, you won't have time for people who aren't as serious about it as you are. That man ghosting you hits different when you put in work for your future. That man who can't commit hits different when you sacrifice other aspects of your life for it. That man who refuses to put a title on things it's different when you put something on hold for this relationship. When we're over 30, we not just dating to waste time. Most of us have a destination we're going toward. If you do, congratulations, you're listening to the right podcast. If you don't, you're probably just not being honest with yourself. While Noah and Wade stumbled into their love story, there was a definite moment when shit got real. If you can tell me that you're something other than straight. At some point, Noah understood what he was feeling, gave himself an objective, and put intention behind pursuing that objective with Wade. No self-respecting man willingly wastes his time and money because dating is expensive. So if you're constantly doom scrolling, sliding into DMs, entertaining conversations with hopefuls, going out, making small talk, and exchanging playful banner all because you're bored, that means you probably either don't value their time, and more importantly, you don't value yours. Since we're dating with intention, that is, we're moving in the direction of our emotional goals, there's some legwork that goes into achieving what we want for ourselves. Obviously, dating isn't a solo mission. We can't dictate all the steps of a dating situation because that would be controlling. But sometimes just putting clear intention behind your words and your actions as you look for a man or start building with this man is all that distinguishes a fizzled entanglement from a serious relationship. The way we show that intention is through our routine. There's one bigger component that all of these questions are built on that will unlock the key to getting over the 90 day dating hump. I think the bigger lesson is about how seriously we take our lives. Niggas will play in your face if you let them. You, me, we, we are all our niggas. We treat so much of our lives like we ain't got nowhere to go. Like we have all the time in the world and like our brothers and our kinsmen will be here forever. I interviewed Lewis Shackelford on an episode of Dear Black Gay Men and we weren't talking about dating, but he said something that really hit me. He was talking about Dr. Stefan Wallace, who had just passed and said, You better stop treating people like they're going to be here forever. Before any of these three questions can work in dating, in relationships, in life, you got to believe that your life matters enough to share it with somebody. We give a man the leftovers of our life. The through line is that the good parts, the entree is for us alone. He can have the to-go box of our time. He can get the leftovers of our effort that we keep in the Cool Whip container in the ice box. In order for any of this to work, these three questions to have an impact on your dating life, you have to believe that your life and all the work you put in it isn't just for you. You have to reconcile deep in your spirit that it is dope to be a black gay man who loves black gay men and then move in the direction of actually loving a black gay man. You understand that when you want that, when you're willing to sacrifice for that. Only then will the three questions work. So dear black gay men, 
sharing is caring that was our show i am jay the gentleman that's at jai the gentleman on ig and facebook if this episode made you feel a little more dope be sure to subscribe on youtube like the video and share it with someone who needs a dopeness reminder Dear Black Gay Men podcast is new every Wednesday. You can stream it on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. And thanks in advance for a five-star rating. It really helps us find new listeners. We go live Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern with our interview series, Dear Black Gay Men Live. So follow at Dear Black Gay Men on social so you never miss a thing. I am Jay the Gentleman. This has been Dear Black Gay Men podcast, and I will talk to you next time. Bye.